I asked a kid, actually, it was my son who came up with that on a scale of 1776 to 1984. Where does it fall? You know, we want to know, is this going to uh, resonate with us viscerally? Is it going to present the real problems that we face in this country with the police state, with the surveillance state? I think it definitely mm -hmm. does. You know, as far as, you know, a movie to take your kids to, I think the first one's probably more visually appealing to a child. But this one, if you're up on the facts and you know what's going on in the real world, you can draw all these comparisons very similar. Uh, just uh, used to talk about DHS being shielded and many other comparisons I won't go into right now because I don't want to mm -hmm. spoil the mm -hmm. movie. But there's a lot of real stuff being mentioned or at least things that you can parallel pretty closely to real world events and real world problems going on in this film. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I saw a review from a couple of days ago on NPR. Now, I'm just kind of wondering from somebody that's seen it now, their, their take on it. It was titled Captain America on the Potomac. And I'm just wondering if this is kind of from their DC-centric perspective or what. Let me just read you a little uh, section of this. They say the Trisk Kellyan, I guess, is the big building. Is it merely on the beautiful Potomac, but in it, jutting out to dangle over the water, incidentally and ironically obliterating a fair amount of actual landscape? They talk about how uh, Pot the Potomac area and the Washington, D.C. area is kind of put out there pastorally in the film. And uh, D.C. looks like it's organic. And here you've got this skyscraper police state uh, icon that is kind of jutting out into it. Did, did that come across to you that way? Or is that really kind of their perspective on it? I'm just curious. Uh, I mean, it is a very large building. And like I so said, D.C. is the backdrop. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that's an unfair criticism of the film. But I don't think that's too much of what the film's actually about. Mm -hmm. Well, they were actually saying, I think, their, their take on it, they were kind of surprised that... In the film, they, they saw, uh, because it was set in D.C., they kind of saw D.C. As, as representative of America. Well, and that's not wanna, typically the case. If you want to <laughs> say that that's the level of corruption and you know, deception <laughs> that's actually going on. And just you know, tying it into reality right now, it's a great thing for people to, if you are a, a policeman or you know, working for the CIA or whatever, maybe you're not a bad guy. But look to your right, look to your left. You don't know what agenda these guys have because it's all compartmentalized and you you don't know what the 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 people who are working behind the scenes what their big agenda is where they're what they're working towards you know i think one of the things that makes captain america so uh compelling to everybody is that for the longest period of time we've always we've seen in an effort to try to make uh, protagonists more believable they give them elements of darkness and now it's become so bad that we see the heroes of many movies today are much worse than the villains of yeah. 20, 30 years ago, certainly of uh, the, the villains in the movies that I was watching as a kid. And so when we see Captain America, who is this guy who has this straight moral foundation, he's got a solid moral foundation, he knows what he believes, he's going to stand on it, he's going to do what he believes is right. And, and we see that kind of contrasted with uh, Tony Stark, who's pretty much a representative of uh, the current military society, industrial. the military-industrial complex, yeah. amoral, anything for money. And it's like, oh, I can spend every once in a while he does something altruistically, but he has to kind of be pulled into it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the thing about Captain America that really stood out in the first one, that straight-up earnestness. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd say the only real criticism I would have of the film is that everybody, you know, your crooked people, they weren't official government politicians. They're kind of all these offshoots. So they didn't really touch on the real political corruption that could or, you know, would happen in the real world. I think there's like like one crooked senator, but by and large, they don't talk about, you know, how does the president feel about this or how does Congress, Congress feel about all these things? It's more of this kind of shadow DHS type group. I see. So it's kind of a... They're, they're, they're kind of giving a pass to the uh, politicians in yeah. a sense, <laughs> like letting them off the hook a little bit. Well, they also had bringing it all in. Um, there was just so many different themes in this movie, and they had, you know, the singularity was a big part of this movie, and mm. how they were working toward that as well. They pulled in Operation Paperclip, kind of tied that into how that was working for the New World Order. There was um, Chris saw some some Benghazi esque scenes yeah. there. Yeah, well, we don't want to elaborate too much on that, but I mean, it, there there's a. A situation that happens in the film that you can mirror toward towards time by a type of a Benghazi situation. Well, certainly the super soldier, as we mentioned at the beginning of the discussion with uh, Kit Daniels in here, uh, the super soldier and, and what DARPA is working on that is not really science fiction anymore. I mean that no. that is really the basis of their research and. 
It's very troubling to me to see that you've got DARPA, which has a research budget that is bigger than the military spending of most countries. Mm -hmm. And what they are involved in, it's almost like they go in and they take the any new technology, whether it is uh, electronics or whether it's uh, biological, everything that they do, they always seem to go in and take find the darkest way that it could be applied. You know, yeah. the most perverse way that the technology could be, because any technology is nothing but a tool. It can be used for good or it can be used for evil. Except DARPA <laughs> always well, looks for the most evil about, application right. of it. About using <laughs> the super soldier for good or for evil. You remember in the first Captain America film that he didn't originally want to accept Rogers, not just because of his physical stature, but because he, there was another guy who thought it was more police state line. He's like, so-and-so is a soldier. He's going to do what we tell him. He's going to kill who we tell him to kill and do what we tell him to do. And as you see, uh, not only in the last movie, but in the new movie, you know, Captain America, he has that line. He yeah. says, you know, I'm going out there to keep people safe. I'm not doing your black ops. I'm not doing all this stuff. I'm, I'm here to be a soldier, not a spy. That's right. In the very first movie, the scientist who was the chief scientist and had to say so, he picked him because he had moral character. That's the thing that is going to win this, is moral backbone. And it makes everybody into a super soldier. Great review. Thank you so much for filling us in on that. And you didn't give anything away. I got to say, I, I still want to see it. I think everybody's going to this movie. All right, we'll be right back. My name is Dell, and I live in El Cajon, California. I was concerned about my cholesterol readings because I knew that high cholesterol is related to clogging of the arteries and increases the risk for heart attack and stroke. One day, I heard an ad for heart and body extract, and I was skeptical, but I decided to give it a try. Man, the numbers don't lie. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Jessica Armand here, creator of My Magic Mud, the all-natural teeth whitener and strengthening remedy that's getting rave reviews from GCN listeners. Here's what Austin dentist Dr. Griffin Cole has to say about it. I really love this Magic Mud product. Because charcoal is so absorbent, it's very effective at taking off all the sticky plaque and debris that gets stuck on our teeth every day. I highly recommend My Magic Mud. Visit MyMagicMud.com to hear the full interview with Dr. Cole. Get your jar today. That's MyMagicMud.com. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a glue free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com. Keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show Because there's a war on for your mind Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show I'm David Knight We just had a great review of the Captain America movie That premiered in limited run last night It's going to be, actually today is when it's uh, going to be played uh, It was just a couple of couple of uh, runnings last night, I think midnight showings, 8 o'clock showings across the country. 
Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson, and Kit Daniels gave us a great review without spoiling anything. But before I go into some more news, I want to tell you that this hour of the Alex Jones Show has been brought to you by MyPatriotSupply.com. Folks, we know the globalists are digging in. The day is coming when America as we know and love it will be a distant memory. But patriots everywhere are getting prepared, and they're doing it with one of my favorite companies, MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com offers high-quality survival gear and is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. The food's delicious, easy to prepare, put together with GMO-free crops, and it's storable for 25 years. And My Patriot Supply has developed space-saving and secure food storage bins, unlike the flimsy plastic pails you find almost everywhere else. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today for special offers. That's MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. The globalists are counting on you to be unprepared. Fight back. Get prepared at MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today. Now, just before the break, we were talking about the intolerance of society and how we see this coming out. There's an article on InfoWars. If you don't conform, the thought Nazis will get you. And we were talking just before they came in for the uh, review of Captain America, before the InfoWars crew came in. We were talking about the intolerance that we're seeing rising in this country. Now, this article is up on InfoWars.com. Michael Snyder points out that this guy that was just driven out of Mozilla, the CEO who was driven out of there, had a, um, was driven out because he supported Proposition 8. That's the proposition in California that supported traditional marriage. And it doesn't matter, he points out, that it was passed by 52% of the voters. It doesn't matter that he gave $1,000 to it, and it doesn't matter that he did things like inventing the programming language JavaScript and that he co-founded Mozilla. Instead, they pushed him out. And I was reading uh, just a brief quote. I want to read a little bit more of this quote from Andrew Sullivan. It's on his website, dish.andrewsullivan.com. And he said what we really need to have said by both sides on this debate on so many things. I've seen so much intolerance from the left when it comes to religion or when it comes to tolerance of religion. They can be incredibly intolerant in the name of tolerance. That's the irony of it. That's what's so bad about it. And that's what Andrew Sullivan points out here. He says, will this fellow who's just been pushed out of Mozilla, will he be forced now to walk through the streets in shame? Why not put him in stocks? He said, this whole episode disgusts me as it should disgust anyone interested in a tolerant and diverse society. If this is the gay rights movement today, hounding our opponents with a fanaticism more like the religious right than anyone else, then count me out. If, we're about to, if we are about intimidating the free speech of others, we are no better than the anti-gay bullies who came before us. And we have seen that not just about homosexual marriage, We've also seen that about exercising your religious freedom and not participating in the murder of infants. We have a Supreme Court case, a case that's been argued uh, last week before the Supreme Court. They're currently deciding on it. That's the case, of course, of Hobby Lobby and another company, uh, Conestoga uh, Furniture or something like that. It's a smaller company. People are arguing that they don't lose their First Amendment protection of religious freedom just because they create a, society, uh, a company and they cannot be compelled to pay for abortions. We also saw this another story from Don Salazar, boy forced to stop reading the Bible in an after school program. But in this case, the ACLU is defending him, not attacking religious freedom. That's good news. We've seen that the army is no longer going to use the Southern Poverty Law Center. That's good news. Uh, I'm sorry, not the army, the FBI. So maybe things are starting to change. We're going to be right back with some more news. Stay tuned. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. 
Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. At